I'm leaving some stuff behind. Uh oh, say it like you mean it. Tell them, say, I'm leaving some stuff people behind. Of God, people of God, the story, the story, the story. The story of the people of Israel or the children of Israel being brought out of bondage is really not an unfamiliar story, even to the most infrequent Bible reader. If you go back and you, particularly for those of us who grew up in and around the church, you do know that there were just some stories that we learned as children. We learned that Joshua fit the battle of Jericho and the walls came tumbling down. We, we, we know all about old man Daniel being in a lion's den. Who have not heard of Shadrach, Meshach and a bad Negro being trapped in a fiery furnace? All of us know about Adam and Eve and Eve eating the fruit. I mean we know that. And we, and we know about it. We know about it. We know about how God commanded Moses to go and set his people free and how he lifted up his staff and parted the Red Sea and all of them came across. And we like to point out the fact that they didn't even have mud on their shoes because God is such a good God. God will let you walk through mud and still leave your shoes dry. I, I wish I had somebody. All of us, all of us know this particular story. It is a story filled with rich nuggets of history and theology about the awesome activity of our God. In the book of the, in the, book of the Exodus, you all, we see a God who comes to see about his people who have been forced to live in a land that's not their home. But not only that, you all, not only have they been forced to live in this land, but the Bible would have us to know that they have taken up residence with a people who are causing them to live a life outside of that which God God has purpose, planned, and provided for them. And so where our text takes up, it is on the heels, you all, of what I think is one of the most interesting exchanges in all of the Bible. If you will go through your Bible and search it from cover to cover, you will not find a more interesting conversation than the conversation we see taking place at the end of chapter number five and the beginning of chapter number six in the story of the Exodus. You will remember the Bible says Moses has gone to God at the end of chapter five, but you must understand he does not go to celebrate God. He does not go to and brag to God but instead he has gone to God in disgust and confusion in other words he has gone to levy his complaint about God because he really doesn't like how God has handled things up to this point are you hearing me now Moses recognizes yes I'm a fugitive yes I'm on the run yes I've done some things in my life that are not pleasing to God but I didn't come to talk about that I've come to talk about why God is not doing what I need for God to do at this particular time now you will remember it was at God's command somebody said was God's idea. It was at God's command that Moses has entered the picture as the ebony emancipator and the liberating lawgiver. He has been drafted by God to free the people from the harsh hand of Pharaoh. But not only does he have the knowledge that God has handpicked him, but he has been given the assurance that he would prevail. After all, how can you lose when I am that I am is on your side? It's one thing to have folk on your side, but how can you lose when I am that I am is on your side? I, I like that. He says, I am that I am. Don't miss that now. How can you lose when you got I am that on your side? Because no matter where you find yourself, whatever you need, God says, I am that. God, I need a healer. I am that. God, I need a deliverer. I am that. God, I need a miracle worker. I am that I am. So how can you lose with I am on your side? I dare to look at your neighbor and say, I can't lose with the stuff I use. You, 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 you can't lose with I am on your side. Well, and my Bible reads readers already know things have not gone down the way Moses thought they would go down. So he goes to God and says, God, ever since I came back to Egypt on your behalf, things have not gotten better. Instead, they've gotten worse. He said, before I showed up, at least Pharaoh gave the people some straw to make bricks with. Now they got to find their own straw before they ever start making brick. He said, so it hadn't gotten better, God. It's gotten worse. He said, the thing I thought would happen has not happened. The victory I thought I would experience has not been realized. And God, what I need to know is, what's up? He says, if you sent me there to deliver them, if I followed everything you told me to do, why are things working out for me any better than they are? I got a question for you. Is there anybody in here that can relate to where Moses is in the text? Have you ever had a moment in your life where you felt like going to God and saying, God, what's up? I don't mean no disrespect. I ain't trying to cause no trouble. God, I just need to know what's up. I mean, what, what seemed to be the problem, God? I upheld my end of the deal. What seemed to be preventing you from upholding your end of the deal? There's some things that are about to change. See, I'm about to see some things happen. See, God didn't bring me, oh God, don't miss this, into a new year to keep me in last year's mess. Did you hear what I said? 
God didn't bring me into a new year to keep me stuck in last year's times. Internal bondages are held in place by external symbols. L let me ease up on you. Sometimes internal bondages are held in place by external symbols. You're still looking at me funny. Let me come and get you. The children of Israel are held in bondage in Egypt. They cannot get free from it. They're in Egypt. All they know is Egypt. And they are surrounded by the symbols of their bondage. Everywhere they go, they see something that reminds them of their bondage. They see the pyramids. They see the courts of Pharaoh. They see the clothes on their back. Even when they smell their breath, they're reminded of the bondage. Because in Egypt, all they ate were garlic, lentils, and onions. Food that the Pharaoh provided. I wish I had somebody. You see, all of these were symbols. They were visible reminders us to keep them in mental bondage because every time they stepped out of the house and saw the pyramid there was a reminder that Pharaoh was in charge every time they looked at the clothes on their back Pharaoh was in charge every time they sat down to eat a meal they were reminded Pharaoh was still in charge so when God gets ready to set them free he does not do it in Egypt because if he leaves them there they will be standing in their present constantly reminded of their past somebody just miss what I said if he leaves them there they will be standing in their present constantly reminded of their past who am I preaching to God says when I deliver you I separate you from everything and everybody that will remind you of your past I wish I had somebody because you need some new symbols in order to visualize some new freedom you cannot have new freedom trying to hang on to some old stuff I wish I had somebody. Listen, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I know some of y'all ain't gonna receive it. Gotta drop it in your spirit though. When you get free, you may not be able to go around some of the same folk. When you get free, you may not be able to go to some of the same places you used to go. When you get free, you may not be able to wear some of the same clothes you used to wear. I, I wish I had somebody. Listen, listen. You may, uh, now watch, watch, I'm going to find about seven people right here. You may have to give somebody back their promise ring, their engagement ring, their I like you, you like me ring. I wish I had somebody. See, some stuff you just got to give back. You, you, you may have to, you may have to, you may have to, you may have to give them that necklace back. You may have to give them the apartment back. You may have to give them their car key back. I wish I had some. There is God's power in that message. I'm leaving some stuff behind. That's the word for 2013. If this year is going to be all that you want it to be, all that you need it to be, you've got to leave some stuff in 2012. Leave it there. Don't pick it up. Don't miss it. Don't look back at it. Trust God to give you everything you need in this year. And if you'll do that, I'm convinced that God's going to absolutely positively blow your mind. Thank you for watching the broadcast and I'll be looking for you next week. Grace and peace.